<laughs> um, were you a, a were you big on birthdays? I was, I was thinking about the whole birthday thing before you came uh, out here. Were, were you when growing up? Like, how big a deal were birthdays to you or um, not? Were I, I disappointed. Wanted, or? wanted them to be a big deal, um, but my birthday is November twenty sixth. So oh. you already know. So it would randomly, and I mean, if it didn't fall on Thanksgiving, everyone was like gone. So my birthdays were very sad. <laughs> Plus, like everybody had just given you all their Thanksgiving gifts, so you yeah. got no birthday gifts. Or, or they just double them up. Or if people like wanted, like they actually came, they would be like really full and sleepy. <laughs> like kids pass out so early, so it was super sad. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I brought this up. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I go on this cruise. <laughs> Dredge up the memories. <laughs> Uh, they were pretty good. I, I have I had one of those really annoyingly pleasant, unremarkable childhoods. I, I, I actually here's a here's a birthday story. I think, I think that makes it very remarkable. Actually. Well, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Thank you. Uh, this is this was my best birthday growing up. Um, so I'm a child of the '80s. Um, my junior high school friends. Were, I was probably 14, 15 years old. There was a shopping mall called the Oxford Valley Mall near where I grew up. Picture the stereotypical 1980s shopping mall, and that was it. And this was before they had food dedicated food courts in a shopping mall. They would just have a restaurant here, a Baskin Robbins there, or whatever. And there was this one uh, hot dog place in the mall, and it was called Swanky Frank. <laughs> the decor was all in red and orange and kind of umber stripes. It just like a 70s nightmare. If and, I was I was a male stripper in the 80s. Yeah. Gosh, that's a good man. And then on, the, on one wall, probably seven, eight feet high, was this mural of a hot dog oh, okay. oh. dressed to the nines with a top hat and a monocle and a cane, and he was Swanky Frank. How dare you eat him? I know. He worked so hard for a vampire. <laughs> Well, he seemed very happy, pleased to see you eating his brethren, apparently. <laughs> yes, for the masses. So um, and it was, you know, it had like the stand-up tables. It was, you know, it wasn't a sit-down place, yeah. just you know, two, three stand-up tables. And I used to always joke to my friends I wanted to have a birthday party at Swanky Frank. And for I think it was my 15th birthday, they threw me a surprise party at Swanky Frank. And all of the gifts they bought at the Spencer's Gift directly across <laughs> from it. So I got like a mug with boobs on it and a poster and a black light. It was the it was really outstanding. Hold on, let's go back to these gifts. Well, it's just what like, birthday was this? It was only four fifteen year old boys. Uh, three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was uh yeah, so that was that was That's fantastic. I, 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 I dreamed of doing anything at a mall. I like I didn't go to like an actual mall until like I started going on tours. I grew up in New York and like malls were like movies to me. I just, I just wanted to be in the mall. I just wanted to like walk around and be cool and yeah. sit in the food court and have an adventure. <laughs> I, I was with you until I have an adventure. <laughs> that was an adventure and everyone's like, but you know, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, we're like doing cocaine and <laughs> 12. But I want to be in the food court. That's where the action is. <laughs> at least if you're in Fast Times at Richmond High, I think. <laughs> Um, would you like to uh, move to our next segment? I think they've got everything set I'm up really here. I'm really excited for the conversation. Uh, actually. Excellent. This is uh, this is a thing we came up with last year, I believe, mm -hmm. maybe two years old. I don't know. Time has no meaning. Um, we get part of our operating philosophy at when we program Joko Cruise is we try and find a whole bunch of interesting and diverse people, not just racially and sexual orientation and gender and such, but just diverse interests yeah. and skills. Uh, because we just want to throw an event that we think would be super interesting and fun to attend. And um, I think when people talk to each other, not only do they you know, get to have that conversation, but you know, it might spark businesses, it might spark other things, it might be, you never know what can happen if you open this conversation with someone else, and that's why these things are so important. Exactly. So we started uh, this segment, which we call In Conversation, where we just try and take two of our guests, preferably who have never met before the cruise, and just have them talk about whatever and see where it goes for about 15 minutes. Yeah. So uh, we would like to bring out for our in-conversation uh, 
segment for the red team. Had to look at somebody's uh, <laughs> lanyard because it's a, been a long day of swimming in sun. Gene knows. Gene knows. I'm only wearing this to anger you. <laughs> Uh, so these, uh, both these people are new to Joko Cruz and I believe never met before Joko yes. Cruz. Please welcome to the stage, Samus and Katie Mack.
for our, not even survival, but it's just what makes us happy to do a whole bunch of shit, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think that I ever looked at my music career as like this amazing thing that I was balancing with my score. I think it was like, oh, I need this. Like right, right, this school right. stuff is making me nuts. Um, and, and we talked about this earlier, we can chat about it here too. Um, I feel like in the academy, part of the reason why you like to go and turn go to this cave place when you're working on a dissertation is because everybody tells you that's what you're supposed to be doing, which yeah. is like yeah. stupid. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, we were talking about this. The like, you're allowed to have other things in your life as long as they're they're things that sort of build toward your productivity in your research in some way. So yeah. like, you're allowed to have exercise as the other thing you do in your life because that makes you a more effective scientist because yeah. you're healthier or whatever. Um, you know, you're allowed to maybe build stuff or whatever, but but there's there's a kind of um, there's a kind of suspicion of anything that deals with other people. Um, you know, uh, like art or, or music or, or writing or, or talking to people or performance of any kind. Um, and I, at least for me, I, I found a lot of people would say, oh, you have this thing you're doing, are you going to do that instead of academia? Mm -hmm. um, and so it, rather than like, we can do both and, you know, have a fuller existence even while we're academics. Absolutely. Yes, that's the best. And I really feel like the, am I allowed to curse? I've seen lots of little oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. The fucked up part about this all is that like, now on the, not even on the other side, but now that I've been able to do all this cool music stuff, like I'm here, um, and I get to just go to like video game conventions and perform, now folks in my department and my department is like, that's awesome, we love you, keep yes. doing it. You know, but initially when you're just a lowly, you know, PhD yeah. candidate kind of running around your department hoping nobody sees you or yells at you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just, you know, you, these things aren't really celebrated. Yeah. So it's like super fucked that you are told not to, to do the shit that gets you recognition later. And actually, I've been invited to like academic conferences because of my music stuff. It's like, what the yeah. hell, you guys? Yeah. So, yeah, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. You have to talk to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've had the same experience. I've had uh, people who are like mentors to me when I was a PhD student who were like, you know, do your work, do your right. thing. Um, later on, like, saying things like, oh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm writing this book. I think your followers would be interested in it. Like, oh, really? Oh, no, no. Who's that? Who's that? That's not cute. I mean, Haters. You know, like, I understand. I understand, and it's, I, I'm not, I'm not offended by it, but it's, it is interesting how once, once it turns around mm -hmm. and like it becomes clear how we can be useful to right. our organizations or our, or our contacts or whatever, then then suddenly oh the value is clear. But but right. when it's just like I'm passionate about this thing and this is something that makes me happy and this is something that's part of who I am, it's kinda like, oh are you sure don't you you know does, right. how how do you how do you find the time? You know, I get that yeah. question all the time. How do you find the time? And it's not they're not asking about my scheduling. They're asking right. like, why would you right. take the time away from just writing lots and lots and lots of papers? Right. It's like a shady way of being like, oh you're wasting time or you're avoiding things. And you're a much less petty person than I am because <laughs> like anyone who comes to me now who wasn't down from the beginning, like, they can go fuck themselves. Like <laughs> And now you want the retweets and the love and the, you know, I'm not even, I'm not doing all that much, but I definitely, this little bit of power that I have, <laughs> I am wielding it as much as I possibly can. So it's really cool that, that you're a much nicer person <laughs> is what I've kind of taken away from this. Um, so I'm just, I guess I'm curious, even from, from the audience, are, are any of y'all in the academy, in academia? Awesome. <laughs> cool. <laughs> to go like how I plan. I didn't have anything after that. I thought I was gonna. Go. I was just hanging out. <laughs> So, so maybe part of this 
explanation for that is mm. when I was planning to come to this, I was talking to one of my colleagues about, um, you know, I was like, oh, what are you doing for spring break? Because this is the spring break mm. part of my school year. Um, so I was asking my colleague what he was doing for spring break. He's like, I'm going to be working. And I was like, it's spring break. And he's like, that's for the students. Like, oh, no. And I'm like, no, no, spring break. Like, <laughs> This is you paying. This is this is you paying. Like you, there is you cannot deny the sanctity of spring break. Like, yeah, you know, like, spring break. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to you have to like take time off in the middle of the semester because otherwise bad things happen to your brain. And you're just like no, you know that's it's just a, you know no. And so maybe that's maybe that's it. Maybe it's just yeah. Everybody you know. Who would be here otherwise? Yeah, they're all it's right. Like working. <laughs> well, then kudos to the, to yeah. the two of you. Come <laughs> 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 yeah. here. Yeah. Be social. we the change we need. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so just. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, sabbatical indeed. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of your, you mentioned a little bit, your kind of future projects or stuff that you'd like to get into yeah. um, as you're between all of these different universes. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking about? Uh, well, so I've got this book, um, and that's, that's technically a future project because it's not done yet. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, I, 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 I want to do more, more just stuff with, um, Talking about science, being mm -hmm. out there in public. Yeah. Um, I. It sounds really corny, but I like the idea of being like a public intellectual. Like yeah. that. It's a sort of old-fashioned notion, of, but like, you know, just that even as scientists, we can talk about things outside of our mm -hmm. media field and be part of the larger conversation about society. And I know that's something that, that you do a lot of yeah. in your work. I mean, both in your research work. In, in what you're studying, which you should tell oh, us yeah. about, but also in your in your other work. Absolutely. Um, so my dissertation, as you can see, I don't want to talk about it at all. I'm like, so, like, no, 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 because that's totally fine. I mean, I'm, I should talk about it. I should learn to talk about it. Um, so it's in the, they're so nice. Um, I haven't said anything. It could be really shitty. So it's basically about the, the politics of community studios or how um, audio engineers and community members and administrators try to manage these recording studios that are both like radical organizing spaces and commercial studios and the tension that results from that process. Um, and so, hey, I got an incentive! Abstract hey. action. Um, but yeah, I think what you're talking about is so cool, just the demystification of science. Yeah. Um, and in my, my field, science and technology studies, that's something we're invested in as well. Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, very often, at least for myself, I never thought that these were discussions I could be a part of mm -hmm. um, when I was younger until I saw folks having the discussion or even, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with, with Dr. Mae Jemison, who was the first doctor in the and she's my real fucking hero, and I love her so much. I just get emotional thinking about her, but seeing her, I went to a talk of hers when I was really little, and it just changed my whole life. I was like, oh, I can be yeah. engaged in these conversations. So I love that you're going to the people and being like, people, hey, there's stuff here that you should be interested in and that I can explain to you. Well, I think it's also just really important that people see human beings who are scientists who are not, you know, the stereotype of like sitting in a tower right. and, uh, you know, never interacting with the public yeah. and, you know, and breaking stereotypes in other ways mm -hmm. in terms of like who we are and right. what we care about, where our, where we put our energy and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think just as it was influential for you to see mm -hmm. Jameson, you know, um, it's, it's important for people to change their view of, you know, who scientists are, right. um, so that they can say, maybe I can be a scientist, mm -hmm. or, or even just, like, it's not a world totally separate from me. Yes, and, absolutely. And I think also, um, I think it's also important for scientists to get involved in, you know, advocacy, advocacy mm -hmm. and caring about people, and mm -hmm. part of that is, is the change 
a an unfair impression of scientists mm -hmm. as being sort of always all cold and heartless, but also because there have been a lot of places in the history of science Absolutely. where science scientists have done really awful things yeah. and yeah. you know take it you know lost their sense of responsibility toward mm -hmm. human beings for the sake of pursuing some question and, and we you know we need to be aware of that and make sure that we're uh, changing that actively and and really you know coming to terms with it and so it's not just the unfair representation but also you know really trying to change how we as scientists do our work and talk about our work and, and make plans so I think that's important too. Uh, that's our team. <laughs> so give it up for two fucking brilliant Fucking awesome! I love smart motherfuckers. Smart motherfuckers love you. They love both of your shoulders. Rising up from morning dew. We just wrote that. It's called shoulders. Parentheses morning dew. Also, brackets, smart motherfuckers. <laughs> Fancy brackets, I love them. Close, close, close. <laughs> All the coders out there. I'm the person who would look at that and be like, oh, I need to listen to this immediately. <laughs>